Now on BBC One, BBC London News with Emily Maitlis. On tonight's programme, the arch conspiracy at Wembley. Will Ken Livingstone get his hands on more cash? And I asked Tony Blair what it means to be a liability for your own mayoral candidate. Also tonight, why well, you might have to take your own toolbox if you're disabled and using public transport. And why you won't have to waste your money on expensive plumbers anymore. Hello, good evening. This is BBC London News. Ken Livingstone has been trying to persuade Londoners that a vote for him would mean an open door to plentiful government investment, whether it's transport projects like Crossrail and the East London Line extension, sporting facilities to win the Olympics, or the Wembley Stadium he was touring today. A Labour mayor, he'll tell us, can reach pockets other candidates can't reach. In a moment, I'll be asking Tony Blair what he can promise us if Ken does get a second term. First, here's our political editor, Tim Donovan. Simon Hughes, I think the cab drivers will support us. He was having trouble today trying to convince one cabbie of the benefits of pedestrianising Oxford Street. It'll be good for you. You'll be able to get You'll be able to go across. You'll be able to go across all the road. No, you will. But he produced an end of term report for Ken Livingstone, who claimed he was going to win the election. Well, I'm going to win the election. 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 I'm going to win the uh, like more police, but with government money, like the congestion charge. But if you look at house building, for example, affordable homes for Londoners, no score. If you look at the leisure car that was promised, no score. It's the sort of report that means the headmaster will say, Livingston, come and see me. That is not good enough. The Livingston campaign's hardly been overwhelmed by support from cabinet ministers, but today Culture Secretary Tessa Jowell was with him on the site of the new Wembley Stadium. You can see it now mm. from, uh, from, from my constituency. They forged a close relationship on this and London's Olympic bid. But might he not turn troublesome for the Labour leadership if he's re-elected and doesn't get what he wants? Frankly, I think all those are, you know, are demons of the past. You know, what we're now looking forward to is the future. But Livingstone wants that future to mean spending on projects like Crossrail when the Treasury is much more cautious. And Wembley, he says, shows just why he should have more powers. The rail stations have been more problematic, too many players involved, the rail companies, Network Rail, SRA, and that's why I'm asking the government to transfer control of that and to the office of the mayor. But Steve Norris said today that seven years of Labour had delivered little for the capital. Why should Londoners believe promises now? I've heard now Mr Blair saying things like, we can't afford not to have Crossrail. Well, can we have it actually committed, please, Prime Minister? Can we see the first tranche of money that would allow us to start the process of digging? More and more to the point with Crossrail, could we have a firm date for the introduction of the parliamentary bill that can actually give us the powers that we need? One day left and both the main challengers promise late surges, while Livingstone at Wembley thinks he has one hand on the cup. Tim Donovan, BBC London News. Well, confidence perhaps from the mayor there, and only yesterday he was in the curious position of warning Labour rebels not to try and unseat Tony Blair in a leadership coup. Earlier today I asked the PM how it felt to have his former adversary coming to his rescue. Probably the same as when I met Ken Livingstone, I should think. I mean, it's, 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 look, you end up in, in politics um, trying to to work out what is the right thing to do on the basis of people's actual record. And I think if you look at the record of central government, we've got the strongest economy we've had for ages, record numbers of jobs. You can see in London, you, know, you go into the local schools and hospitals and see the new investment there. Yet if you do get those votes in London, it will be because Ken Livingstone won important votes for you by being anti one of your key decisions. I think people will make up their minds, frankly, in the end, on the issues to do with London. All I'm saying to people in respect of right, you can agree or disagree, but we have a way forward now that is, I expect, going to be blessed by the United Nations. And there is absolutely no doubt at all that if it makes progress in the way that we hope, then Iraq will be an infinitely better place for the people that live there. You must realise, though, that you are his biggest liability, his biggest encumbrance. When Stephen Norris calls him Blair's mayor, it's meant to be an insult. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what happens in politics, isn't it? But then I think, on the other hand, you know, when 
people then think again. I mean, obviously, there's an issue over Iraq and the war and all the rest of it, and, and some people, including Ken Livingston, disagreed with the decision I took. Although I may say the Conservatives actually backed it, so it's a bit much for them to criticise it now. However, the fact is, that may be there, but in the end, I think people realise that the Mayor of London has real power, not actually over foreign policy, but over things like the economy and crime and transport, and it's important to keep the investment going through. I mean, we've got round about double the investment going into the tube, for example, as, as was going in the time when Mr Norris was part of the Conservative government. So uh, Londoners, by voting for Ken, have to believe this opens the door to serious major government funding. And Ken Livingston told us on Sunday that he had been guaranteed money for the Crossrail project in the July spending review. Uh, what was he guaranteed by you? Well, we've got to do Crossrail. I mean, the, the, the exact method of funding, we haven't worked out yet, and that's something that we're sitting down and discussing with people in in London and obviously with the mayor himself. He sounded like uh, it was worked out and it was all going to appear in July. Have you committed billions to I think to what he was yet? saying was exactly what I've been saying, which is we've got to do Crossrail and we've got to make sure that we commit what is necessary to get it done. But tell us specifically on Crossrail because the July spending review is a, a month away, so he must have some idea... Well, it's exactly why I can't tell promised. you, can I? Because it's a month away and we've got to sit down and work out the details of this very, very carefully. But the commitment to do Crossrail is, is there. Devolution has been key for you, and when our mayoral candidates look towards the states and they see Giuliani and Bloomberg, they say those are men who have real power, and that's what we need to really make a difference to London's transport, housing, uh, crime problems. What will come next for them? Yeah. And I'm not shutting the door to it. I'm simply saying there are no decisions that have been taken on it. And, you know, I think that... that we, it was perfectly sensible for us to wait and see how the system bedded down, but I think it's bedded down pretty well, actually. I mean, people do see London with an identifiable um, mayor and, and someone who is a, a key political figure. Now, the political figure does have powers. There are arguments about extending the powers further. I'm not being coy with you. I'm just simply saying, you know, there's no decision that's been taken about that. In fact, no real discussion yet. Uh, the big focus is really in Europe this week. Yeah. By that, I mean um, Euro 2004. <laughs> Would you favour the diamond formation or the 4-4-2 against Well, I, I tell you what I, I, I always say, when I'm up in the North East and I get asked about um, Bobby Robson and the Newcastle team, I say, look, I've got my problems and he's got his, and uh, I'm content to let him manage his. So I think Sven-Joran Eriksson is in a far better position to decide whether it's a flat midfield or a diamond or whatever, and I think he's probably got enough on his plate without me adding to it. Will you be missing any meetings to watch the games? I've been making sure I don't have any meetings on when the games are there, if I can possibly help it. And, uh, and I think it'll be a great tournament. I think the France-England game does uh, clash with the European election results, but we'll leave that one for now. Tony Blair speaking to me a little earlier. Here it is once more, of course, the full list of candidates standing in the mayoral elections. More details, if you do need them, on our website. We've got lots more to come on the programme, including... I'm in South London to find out why London's next generation of trees don't like these long, hot summers. BBC London has uncovered evidence suggesting our bus network isn't as...